That chuffing that you're listening to is coming from the Steamtown's Baldwin 060 Steam Switcher number 26 going about its business on the local tourist excursions. That nail-biting screeching that you heard before is coming from the train 11Z and is making it stop to set out at Taylor Yard. On another day, a friendly conductor waves from the cab of Dash 940 CW number 9645 as the crew drifts downgrade toward Taylor. So taking into consideration everything we've learned over the past few videos, what do you think the train symbol of this manifest is? Here's a hint. The day is Friday, September 17, 2015. The last day of Canadian Pacific ownership of the line before Norfolk Southern begins operations the next day. This manifest is the Canadian Pacific Train 458, the precursor to the 11R, which became the 11Z, a train that usually ran with Norfolk Southern Power and Canadian Pacific crews. As I've said in other videos, the power on the 458 was usually the power that came up on the previous day on the 459, and in typical operating fashion at the time, the 9645 and the 2077 came up the night before on the northward Binghamton, New York bound train 459. The 11R was an East Deerfield, Massachusetts to Linwood, North Carolina train that worked Binghamton, New York, Enola, and Hagerstown, Maryland along the way. It was cut back to Enola in 2016 with the Enola to Linwood section becoming the train 13R. Later on, what was left of the 11R was cut back yet again, this time to Binghamton, New York, with the Bingo Town to East Deerfield section remaining the train 11R and the Bingo Town to Enola section becoming the 11Z. In 2017, the 11Z was burdened with the task of dragging the Taylor Freight down from Binghamton, leaving the K82 to do all the local work, along with the K81 and now newly minted K79. one of only two 459s that I ever caught. Today's 459 is the next to the last one that will come up the line tomorrow on September 17, 2015, and one that I also would not catch. Early morning that day, September 17, that is, the NS Train 12T, the precursor to the 37T, came up the line with the rare trifecta which included two foreign locomotives. And before you jump through the screen to tell me how CP isn't foreign power on this line yet, seeing CP power of any kind on the 12T was extremely rare, which is why I classify it as foreign on NS trains.
We're shooting at an unusual spot today because of the Alco-powered Delaware-Lackawanna short line following the north leg of the Y down there. Heading up the short manifest is RS3 number 4068, a former Delaware and Hudson locomotive and one of only four Alco RS3s that you can find running on a Class 1 main line anywhere on planet Earth. This is train 37T proper with a grimy but gorgeous 911 on the point. The trailing AC44 C6M number 4018 at that time was one of the newest locomotives on Norfolk Southern.
one thing that has not changed from railroad to railroad going as far back as the Delaware, Lackawanna, and Western is that northbound trains have to fight their way out of Scranton. Today's Train 14R treats us to a jolly horn salute from a friendly engineer as well as waves from the also friendly conductor Tanner Dalrymple and his brakeman. The third unit on this train is an AC-powered EMD SD80 map and sadly by this time had less than three years of service left on NS before being sold off for scrap.
a few miles down grid at our usual spot, train M4R, which is the extra section of that 14R that we just saw with the 80 Mac, roars up the hill with two NSACs and the weather weary Union Pacific EMD. On the neighboring Delaware Lackawanna, the same day we caught K81 crew, in fact, we get a glimpse of the future home of the new Von Storch engine shops. Today, just a nameless patch of trees, the Carbondale bound train SC7 is a common sight on this train today, but in a few years that will change. The Biden administration's war on fossil fuels has decreased the frequency of which unit sand trains like these move through the area. 